It's Wednesday, May 8th. We have lots to tell you today. Dr. Leland Marvin Lucas and Verlin Dawn Eleanor Klaas were today sworn in before President David Granger to serve as members of the Public Utilities Commission, PUC. According to a media release from the Ministry of the Presidency, the PUC is the guardian of the public interest. It has the responsibility to ensure that the public utility services are delivered to the people in a manner that is safe, adequate, efficient, reasonable and non-discriminatory. The Commission, in doing so, is tasked with ensuring that the public utility laws are upheld. Government expects that the Commission will continue to ensure that citizens' welfare will be continuously enhanced through the provision and delivery of public utility services. More on this story can be read on our website. Participants from across the Caribbean are in Guyana for the 8th International Road Federation IRF, Caribbean Regional Congress being held at the Artichon Conference Centre. From bridges to walkways, countries across the region will be touching on this and many more at the 8th IRF Caribbean Regional Congress. This, the 8th edition of the Caribbean Regional Congress, under the team Modernizing the Regional Roads for Future Generation, comes at a critical point of the economic and social transformation that is unfolding in Guyana. Today, we can proud, proudly declare that we have moved beyond the state of conceptualization to development and implementation of projects that will not only shape the landscape of our country, but integrate our populace through infrastructural access. The conference is especially critical for Guyana as the country prepares to usher in first oil in 2020 following our discoveries of offshore oil and gas resources, which calls for a strengthening of onshore infrastructure. In this regard, our Ministry of Public Infrastructure has embarked on its Infrastructure Development Plan, which sets the stage for the next five years. Populated by improved roads, bridges, overparks, ports, and stellings. From the Rupununi to Oriala, Linden to Carmentine, Paramatatoy to Port Kaituma, our plan includes construction and rehabilitation of key roadways and links, bridges, for developments and sure development works. Meanwhile, following the launch in a ministerial meeting to discuss the questions and issues raised while offering solutions, a proposal was made by Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson to have technocrat members chosen as country representatives. So what happens is that if we if, if somebody that is not that doesn't have me uh, outside of our uh, mandate and take the lead and push it, push it quickly. What happens is that at the ninth uh, regional conference, you see five different phases. Yes. And you start the whole ball over, the whole process over, for the whole background and everything like that. And that has been the, the, the whole issue with, with several of these great initiatives. Against this reasoning, the IRF chairman tasked each of the ministers present with nominating a country representative to be long serving members on the committee. Reporting for InfoHub, Nikosi Bruce. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu, addressing the IRF Congress, reminded officials that they will be discussing critical matters which will impact the region's transport sector. Held under the tea modernizing the region's roads for a future generation, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu during his feature address told the participants that Guyana is home to the CARICOM Secretariat and will become the formidable capital of CARICOM. You are coming home, all of you. This is the home of the CARICOM Secretariat, and we hope in a not, not too long distant future that we will become the formidable capital of CARICOM. <laughs> you are here to discuss serious business, to discuss critical matters that will impact the road and transportation sector in our region. We expect many takeaways from your discussions over the next two days. We are immersed in the vision of a Guyana where superhighways, roads, railways, 
river crossings and bridges will create the vital link between our Atlantic seacoast and our southern border, which is the enterprising gateway to the rest of South America. Our people demand high standards. And so your presence here today in Guyana for the first time is an assurance to our people of Guyana and the peoples of the Caribbean that we have friends and we have dependable partners with good works being developed in Guyana. All roads would lead to this country of promise because infrastructure will ensure that whoever comes to invest here is investing in a safe and sound economy. IRF's board member, Dr. Kamil Kalush, said people and goods need to move for an economy to grow. Your presence today underscores the vital connection between Guyana's network of roads and its socioeconomic aspirations at this critical inflection point in your nation's trajectory. Economic prosperity truly is key to realizing the good luck, as His Excellency President Brigadier David Granger recently noted. And good roads will help get you there. The International Road Federation, IRF, serves as a network of public and private sector members in more than 70 countries by providing world-class knowledge resources, advocacy services, and continuing education programs, which together offer a global marketplace for best practices and industry solutions. Reporting from the Otto Chung Conference Center with videographer Kenyan Bacchus, Rebecca Ganesh, InfoHub. The European Union has been a valued partner in human and economic development, particularly for small developing states like Guyana. As such, the cooperative holds its relationship with the EU at the highest level. This assurance was given by President David Granger as he addressed the gathering at the Europe Day celebration hosted last evening at the Pegasus Hotel. Guyana attaches the highest priority to relations with the European Union, which has been a valued partner in human and economic development particularly for small developing states. Our long-standing relationship has been cemented within the ambit of successive Lomé conventions and the current ACP-EU Cotonou Partnership Agreement. His Excellency President David Granger, reflecting on the time Guyana led negotiations on behalf of the Caribbean, and said it was indeed an honor to have been accorded that responsibility. The agreement marked the conception of the African, Caribbean, and Pacific Group of States, ACP, which has enjoyed a vibrant partnership with the EU, commencing with the first Loam Convention of 1975. Georgetown, our capital, you will recall, was the site for the signing of the Georgetown Agreement on the 6th of June, 1975. This agreement marked the conception of the African, Caribbean, and Pacific Group of States, ACP which has enjoyed a vibrant partnership with the EU, commencing with the first Lomé Convention of 1975. The Georgetown Agreement paved the way also for Guyana to benefit from trade and developmental cooperation with the European Union in diverse fields. These include agriculture, coastal zone management, education, health, housing, infrastructure development, public financial management reform, and private sector development. Europe Day symbolizes Europe's quest for peace through economic cooperation and integration. As the celebration got underway at the Pegasus Hotel Tuesday evening, Dr. Karen Cummins, the new foreign minister, also joined the celebrations. For InfoHub, Kippany Jordan. The Sexual Offenses Act, Section 44, provides for the establishment of a sexual offenses court, and in keeping with this law, the Supreme Court on Tuesday officially launched its second sexual offenses court in New Amsterdam, Burbis. The construction of the courtroom took approximately three months to be completed at a cost of $13 million and is housed at the Burbis High Court, Explanade Road, New Amsterdam. Chancellor of the Judiciary, Acting Justice Yonet Cummins Edwards, highlighted that the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, has collaborated with the Justice Department and significantly contributed to the much-needed financial support and capacity building to ensure that justice is served in a fair and efficient manner. 
The aim of the Sexual Offenses Court is at best to minimize re-victimization of survivors of sexual violence. The Sexual Offenses Court seeks to minimize this by providing the facilities that would support victims as they give their evidence. To date, there are 37 cases involving sexual offenses in Burbese, and the acting chancellor said those cases will be handled in a dignified manner that respects the privacy of its victims. Britain's Deputy High Commissioner, Ray Davidson, applauded the Supreme Court for establishing such an advanced courtroom, a new system which replicates much of what is being used in the United Kingdom. It will allow survivors to be able to give their side of events in a more conducive environment. It might also encourage others who have suffered abuse to come forward and feel comfortable in knowing that they will be treated with respect and dignity. Kippany Jordan, InfoHub. Still to come, Guyana received significant response from investors at the largest oil and gas trade show and successful eye surgeries being conducted in Burbese by U.S. Army's medical team. The details of these and more in a moment. Are you ready to embark on a truly epic adventure to an undiscovered corner of South America, where some of the most spectacular natural attractions are unveiled within a beautifully diverse landscape? From the wetlands and savannas, to the ancient mountains, magnificent waterways, and lush and rich in rainforest would provide a vast playground for some of the most exotic and breathtaking creatures on the planet, including many of the world's giant species. This untouched land of mystery and wonder serves up an exclusive experience for travelers. So are you ready for a new, awe-inspiring adventure? Welcome back to nature. Welcome to Guyana. Thanks for staying with us. Following day two of the Offshore Technology Conference 2019 being hosted in Houston, Texas, Chief Executive Officer of Go Invest, Owen Verway, said the Guyana delegation has received a significant response from investors at the event. I think that is positive because that's what we brought businesses here for, um, so that they can find partners to represent, partners who can help them to increase their abilities and their, um, their whole resourcing to compete for jobs in the oil and gas sector and to bring that local content aspect um, in, the, in, in the oil and gas sector where we have more, um, more benefits for local businesses. Um, and I know for sure that has been happening here and we're very, very happy for that. CEO Go Invest Owen Verway. Managing Director of Dapper Technologies, Kester Hudson, noted that the Offshore Technology Conference, OTC 2019, provides local businesses with the opportunity to network and build partnerships. Dapper Technology being um, exposed to the, uh, the Offshore Technology Conference 2019 gives us hope, gives us an opportunity to see endless possibilities in the services that we provide. It allows us to network with all the key stakeholders um, in this massive industry. Guyana is on the cusp of, of, of moving to greater heights and we want to be there to provide that service. Partner in the Hughes, Fields and Stoby law firm Greg Clark also noted the expression of interest in Guyana. Guyana is, is leading the world in oil discoveries as of 2018 and so there's a lot of interest. A lot of companies are coming by expressing an interest and asking the question, how do we get in? OTC 2019 is being held in Houston, Texas, and is well represented by private and public agencies. InfoHub caught up with persons who benefited from eye surgeries complements of a team from the U.S. Army's New Horizons. The team is aiming to successfully complete 300 eye surgeries over a seven-day period. Alison Phillips was among the first to undergo surgery for a pterygium, while Celine John testified that she now sees better out of her right eye after she had a cataract surgery done at the National Ophthalmology Hospital in Port Morant, Burbies. I come from on the west bank of Demerara in Region 3, 
I come all the way to Barbies to do eye surgery and it was so successful. So anyone is looking and would like to do the eyes, don't be afraid because everything is good. I was afraid first, but you know, I make up my mind and say that I come to do the surgery, so I have to do it. I'm having glaucoma and the cataract, what is the cataract I did? I wasn't seeing properly with the right eye, but now I'm seeing clear. A 21-member surgical team is in Guyana conducting volunteer surgeries for a number of patients. Surgery started on Monday where 12 procedures were successfully completed. One of the surgeons, Dr. Daryl Carlton, said there is a possibility of the team returning to Guyana in the future. I think that I think there's a great potential to do some really good work here. I think there's a lot of patients that are visually impaired uh, and they could really use the surgery. Uh, so I think it would be a, a great thing for us to come down here again in the future. This is, this is a wonderful hospital we're working at. We've had nothing but great cooperation. Meanwhile, other teams are expected to conduct similar surgical exercises during the course of the year. The management of the ophthalmology hospital is also gearing to independently sustain the service delivery. Doctor in charge, Dr. Devendra Rade, said management is hoping to forge ahead with cataract surgeries on a larger scale, in addition to other surgeries already being offered. We are doing surgeries. Um, we've been doing surgeries. Major surgeries, which are the laser surgeries that they do for diabetic patients, they are major surgeries. And... Um, they are doing a lot of minor surgeries as well. So the ophthalmology, we do function, we do provide a service. There are a lot of persons come here every day for glasses. They want to check their eyes to make sure that if they need glasses or not. So we do provide a service. For Info Hub, Delicia Haynes. The Caribbean Court of Justice will on May 9 and 10 be hearing oral arguments relating to the December 21, 2018 vote in the National Assembly. The matter was heard before the acting Chief Justice in the High Court in January. However, this decision was overturned in the Court of Appeal in March. The matter is now before the CCJ for final determination. The hearing will begin from 10 hours on May 9 and continue at 9 hours on May 10. That's all for this evening. Connect with us on WhatsApp, like and subscribe to our Facebook page for notifications and subscribe to our website for more stories. You can also follow us on Instagram for updates. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye.